Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to talk to you about the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is the second part of aerobic cellular respiration. It's sort of like cell respiration is broken up into three parts, and if oxygen is present, then the product of glycolysis, which is the first part, uh, peruvic acid will then be drawn into the mitochondrial matrix and the Krebs cycle will begin. And so this video is primarily discussing the Krebs cycle. <clears throat> but a couple of, a couple of introductory comments about the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is, uh, is extremely famous. It's, it's such a classic catabolic, in other words, uh, uh, chemical reactions that, that break down uh, molecules. Uh, it, uh, it occurs in the mitochondrial matrix it's cyclical, that's pretty cool. I don't know if you've ever experienced a cyclic uh, reaction before, but we're, we'll, we'll be checking it out uh, momentarily. And it segues the products of the Krebs cycle will then be used by the mitochondrial Christi, which is the inner membrane uh, in the electron transport system to produce a copious amount of ATP. And so the Krebs cycle does make two ATP, uh, just like glycolysis makes two ATP, it makes it uh, in the same way, substrate level, um, phosphorylation, phosphorylation, and so uh, no oxygen is used in the Krebs cycle, although it's needed for peruvic acid to come into the mitochondria, and interestingly enough, the Krebs cycle produces carbon dioxide. And that's kind of significant in a sense because that's what most people think of when they think of respiration, which is breathe in oxygen, breathe out carbon dioxide. So how, how about this? Be thinking about this while you're watching the video, that all the carbon dioxide that you're breathing out while watching the video, so breathing out right now, is coming from the Krebs cycle. And so we'll have to check that out. And so today's conversation is about the Krebs cycle. And again, uh, what we've been talking about before, if you saw the previous video on glycolysis, is that the blood is carrying glucose, and glucose is then diffusing into the cell, and in the cytoplasm is where glycolysis is taking place. That's right, glycolysis. It's those 10 steps that go like that in the cytoplasm, and then the end product is peruvic acid, and then that is entering into the mitochondria matrix, which is happening right there. And so that's where we're going to be in our conversation today. And so let's check that out. Um, this diagram might be a little bit more informative. If you saw the first video, it may be not so much, but now you might be catching this a little bit better. So glycolysis, as I said just a moment ago, occurs in the cytoplasm. Its end product is peruvic acid. It's part of aerobic cell respiration, which is the three parts of glycolysis, Krebs, and electron transport. However, glycolysis in and of itself is an anaerobic pathway. It produces, <clears throat> excuse me, it produces two ATP through substrate level phosphorylation, and the Krebs cycle will also produce two ATP uh, for phosphate level. But the real key to the Krebs cycle, let me spoiler alert: the real key to the Krebs cycle is that it takes the food that we eat. And then this is a discussion of carbohydrate metabolism, but it really, the Krebs cycle will take in parts of fatty acids and sugar, and the Krebs cycle will turn all of that energy into these reduced electron carriers, principally NADH and FADH2. And then those reduced coenzymes will be used in the electron transport uh, to make a tremendous amount of ATP called oxidative phosphorylation. So that's where we are, and so we're, let's go into the let's go into the mitochondria. But let's let's talk about the structure of the mitochondria. It's a really interesting structure. So one of the things this is a uh, transmission electron micrograph. Incredible little dots or ribosomes out here. Do you notice how it, there's two membranes? It's like it has this outer membrane that goes around like this, and then it has an inner membrane. So it has two membranes, kind of like the nucleus has two membranes. So it has an inner membrane, but check this out. The inner membrane is extremely convoluted. So it's folding and folding and folding. And so a tremendous amount of surface area. And so 
that gives the mitochondria a tremendous ability to produce energy because that's really the goal of cell respiration. Let's not forget about that. And so let's, let's start calling things out uh, anatomically. Let's call the outer membrane the outer membrane. That's always nice. Let's call the inner membrane. Let's call that inner membrane the Christi. Okay, so that, that inner membrane is called the Christi. And then in between the Christi and the outer membrane is what we call in this area, maybe I'll highlight it. In this little area right in here between the outer membrane and the inner membrane, all this outer spot, right, like all this part right out here, is called the intermembrane space. And that's going to be uh, important. We'll be referring back to that when we talk about the electron transport chain. And then inside here, this sort of soupy, fluid-filled enzyme uh, is referred to as the matrix. And that's where the Krebs cycle is going to be happening in the matrix, the Krebs cycle is happening inside the mitochondrial matrix. And so it's right there, but in the real mitochondria, it's right there. So inside the matrix is the Krebs cycle, and the cycle is indeed a cycle. So we're gonna have to check that out. So the Krebs cycle, uh, basically what it's doing is it's yielding some energy by the, from the oxidation of organic molecules. That in and of itself isn't uh, as illuminating as, as unless you understand uh, the video. Like in hindsight, you'll be like, oh yeah, exactly, that's what it does. So again, it's occurring in the mitochondrial matrix. So that's where the Krebs is happening, literally in the mitochondrial matrix. And so that's what's going on. Now, it should be mentioned that three quarters, so 75% of the energy that was started off as glucose is still present in the two molecules of pyruvate. If you recall that pyruvate is a three carbon molecule and there's two of them. So 75% of the energy is still there, so we have to pull it out. And so that's what the Krebs cycle is going to attempt to do. And so if oxygen is present, this is important, pyruvic acid will be drawn into the mitochondria. If it is not present, then it'll stay in the cytosol, as you can see here, anaerobically, and it'll be, it'll be turned into, through a redox reaction, uh, in, in, into ethanol, uh, if you're bacteria or, uh, or yeast, or uh, lactic acid. And so collectively, although there'll be a separate video on this, no worries, it's a, it's a very interesting pathway. The 10 steps of glycolysis plus this conversion to ethanol is what we call fermentation. So that is fermentation over there. But if oxygen, this is without oxygen, without, without oxygen. So if oxygen is present aerobically, as it's, as it's referred to, then uh, pyruvate will, will be pulled into the matrix of the mitochondria and it'll be greeted with the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase, pyruvate dehydrogenase. So, if you recall, dehydrogenase was one of those really cool enzymes that's capable of catalyzing a redox reaction. And so that's what we're about to see. What's fascinating is this chemical reaction that we're going to talk about right now is uh, fascinating because there's like three things that are happening in one chemical reaction. So let's, let's check it out. It's technically not part of the Krebs cycle but it's what happens to pyruvate when it enters into the mitochondria. So here's pyruvate, just to refresh you on the, on the structure. Now, it's pyruvate, it would be pyruvic acid if I was uh, doing this. If I were to add a hydrogen here, then it would be pyruvic acid, but if I remove that, it becomes pyruvate. So pyruvate in the cytosol is entering into the mitochondria. So how does it enter into the mitochondria? it has to go through a membrane protein. So it travels through the outer membrane. And then here's on the inside, this is the Christi, like this, this is the inner membrane. It then has to travel through a protein here and it enters into the mitochondrial matrix. And so here's pyruvic acid into the mitochondrial matrix where it's going to be greeted with pyruvate dehydrogenase. And so let's check it out. And so. Here's the enzyme not shown. Uh, I'll, I'll animate what the enzyme does. So one of the things that the enzyme does, I mentioned three things. One of the things, you see up here that this is that carboxylic acid, even though it doesn't have the hydrogen on it. 
one of the things, one, step one, let, let's just go for that. So step one, even though this is one chemical reaction that we're talking about, the dehydrogenase enzyme is capable of ripping the CO2 off of the pyruvate. That's right, CO2. It's the first appearance of carbon dioxide. I promised you carbon dioxide, there it is. But remember, in terms of your ledger here, there's always gonna be two uh, pyruvate because there was two pyruvates produced during glycolysis. So hey, hey, two carbon dioxides are produced. And so what do you have left over? What you have left over is, let me draw it over here, is this carbon, double bond, oxygen, it's a hydrogen, and CH3. What is that? This two carbon fragment right there. Well, and again, there's two of them. Um, I'm not gonna say there's two of them, maybe I will from now on, uh, but just know that there's two of everything in, in, in our conversation. So this is acetate. I don't know if you're familiar with this chemical before, but acetate, it's a two little carbon fragment and it's, it's, the, it's the end of a, a long chain of glucose. So this is the 11th step of what's happened to glucose. You got it down to two of these things. And you're like, well, wait a minute. If there's two of them, that means there's four carbons. Wait a minute, we uh, glucose with six carbons. Ah, here, here it is. So two of the carbons in glucose are being removed when you breathe out. Okay, so acetate. What do you? So what else is going to happen to acetate? Well, here's the acetate, that two carbon fragment. Now also, this is part two, part two of the same chemical reaction. The the pyruvate, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Tough to say that is going to catalyze a redox reaction. That's why it's called a dehydrogenase, because it's removing a hydride. And so the substrate acetate is going to be oxidized. So it's going to lose electrons. It's going to lose electrons. And when it loses electrons, you're like, OK, who's causing? Who's causing the oxidation? Who, what is the oxidizing agent is, is what you're searching for. The oxidizing agent is, of course, the very electronegative coenzyme, which is sitting in the enzyme active site, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide plus. And so it's going to gain the electrons. And in so doing, by gaining electrons, it becomes reduced. And remember, there's two of everything. So there's two NADHs that are produced when acetate is converted to NADH. Pretty cool. Here's the, th here's the thing, though. Not only is some energy stored in that reduced coenzyme that we're going to be using later in the electron transport system to produce ATP, but the cell takes advantage of the oxidation, which is a release of energy. It takes advantage of it, and it does this third thing. This third part of the same chemical reaction is that when the oxidation takes place, the enzyme takes a coenzyme. Now, a coenzyme is what we've, what we've been talking about. Like NAD plus is a coenzyme. Uh, a coenzyme is a organic fairly small molecule. A lot of coenzymes are vitamin or vitamin deriv derivatives, okay? Coenzyme, sorry about the non-creative name of it, but coenzyme A, okay, is a fairly medium-sized molecule, and the energy necessary uh, from the redox reaction takes a molecule called CoA, and let me dr draw out the, the acetyl right here. Okay, let me do that. It removes that hydrogen and it's going to stick via a disulfite bridge, a coenzyme. Now, I'm not drawing the structure of a coenzyme. It's rather large. Not only am I not drawing it because it's kind of large, but I don't recall the structure of it. But that's something that you could, you could easily look up if you're interested. What does is, what is coenzyme A look like? You know, the, I think the real question that you might be having right here is, why would this happen? Why would you stick a coenzyme onto this little tiny two carbon fragment? And by the way, what is this thing called? What is the product of this? The product of all three of these little uh, half reactions is called acetyl, because it's acetate, but no longer. It's called acetyl-CoA. That's the 
product of that little step that as soon as pyruvate enters into the, the mitochondrial matrix, this is what happens to it. The coenzyme is going to prime this little two carbon fragment for the first chemical reaction in the Krebs cycle. Okay, so it's going to make it energetically favorable. So in and of itself, it's not, not doing anything, but yeah, that, rather it's re very important. Okay, so let's check this out. Actually, let's, let's take a look um, animation-wise at what we've covered so far. I think this is, it's nice to be able to see another version of this. And so check, Continues in the oh, Krebs cycle. Uh, pa pause the narration. Okay, so check this out. So pyruvic acid diffuses in, if, if there's oxygen, it diffuses into the mitochondrial matrix. Here's the mitochondria. And there's two of them, remember. And so what's going to happen here is, let's, let's check it out. What's going to happen is, first thing that's going to happen is uh, a redox reaction. So NAD plus is going to be converted into NADH. CO2 is produced. Notice there was two of them. And then here's your acetate. And now you're going to stick a coenzyme on it to produce acetyl-CoA. And there you have it. Acetyl-CoA, if I can animate this, let me attempt it. Um, the acetyl-CoA is going to be the very first substrate or reactant in the Krebs cycle. Okay, So there's the Krebs cycle. What, what you've seen so far is not the Krebs cycle. What, we, what we're seeing is pyruvic acid turning into acetyl-CoA. OK, that's good. That's an excellent thing. And so let's check one more out. OK, so here's the formation of acetyl-CoA. And so there's your pyruvate entering your outer membrane, and then it's going to pass into the inner membrane space through the Christi. And so pyruvate, it's wondering, where can I go? And then dehydrogenase rips a carbon dioxide from it. So then you have acetate. And then it's, there's an oxidation. NADH is produced. And then the CoA is attached on. And now you have acetyl-CoA. That big red <laughs> jelly bean is uh, a coenzyme A. <laughs> So better than I can draw it. So, so there you go. So, all right, there we have it. All right, let's go back to, now we're going to do, uh, well, here's review, just for a second, just to review this. So here's pyruvate. And let's focus in on the, on the red carbons right there because see this upper CO2 is removed and then those two form the acetate and then the redox reaction stores some of the energy in NADH and then the acetyl-CoA is attached. And so the product of this little one, two, three, one chemical reaction is acetyl-CoA. So the CO2 is removed, a redox reaction, and a coenzyme is attached. And so as pyruvic acid enters into the mitochondria, sort of this huge multi-enzyme complex is able to uh, modify it and turn it into acetyl-CoA. Pretty awesome. And so this is a the short version of that. Um, as you can see, here's pyruvate, one, two, three carbons. It's, uh, it's, it's in its anion form, so it's not pyruvic acid. Here's the coenzyme attaching. Here is the redox reaction and also the removal of the CO2, which is happening right there. So then we have an acetyl coenzyme A. The coenzyme is in blue. The acetyl is black. OK, so acetyl-CoA enters into the Krebs cycle. And so the Krebs cycle is in the matrix, again, just to, just to draw it. So acetyl-CoA, uh, so here's the CoA right here, and here's your acetyl right there. There's your acetyl-CoA. And so this is going into, now we're inside, let me draw it like this, we're inside the matrix. And so what's going to be the very first chemical reaction of the Krebs cycle. Well, before I get into the Krebs cycle, just, just a moment, um, if you don't mind me entertaining this idea, but, you know, what's up with the word Krebs? You know, what's the story with that? Well, Krebs is a name, and so it's, it's, it's Hans Krebs. And so he was a, as it turns out, he was a, a German-born, but he, but he grew up in, in England. And as it turns out, he's a Nobel Prize winner for for describing and elucidating this pathway that we're about to talk about. And so what I find uh, rather remarkable is that 
you know, he was able to do this in the 1930s. Can you believe it? In the 1930s. And so he received the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1953. A significant date in science, because you may know that this is the, the date that uh, Jim Watson and Francis Crick described the, the, uh, the structure of uh, the d double helix of DNA. So that's kind of, kind of cool. All right, so there's Hans Krebs. Well, the Krebs cycle looks like this. And so you're like, whoa, you know, don't be intimidated. Again, if, if you're watching this video and you're able to follow it so far, you're in good, you're in good shape. Um, don't, there's, no, there's no worry. Again, it's sort of like looking at something rather, ra rather beautiful, like a sunset or something like that. We're not, we're not going to be afraid of it, even though that we can't describe all the colors or whatever. It's not about that. It's about making our best attempt to understand it. And if you think about it, it's only, only eight steps. <laughs> How do you like that? So there's only eight steps. And the reason it's called a cycle is that, let's, let's focus up here for a second. So here's our good friend acetyl-CoA, this two little carbon fragment, which is coming in from glucose. What's interesting is some, we, we're not talking about fatty acid metabolism or amino acid metabolism, but there's some other organic molecules that can be broken into acetyl-CoA. But let's just say the glucose is breaking down into two acetyl-CoAs. So the very first chemical reaction of the Krebs cycle is a chemical that's already present in the matrix called oxaloacetate, oxaloacetate. It's a four carbon, let me direct your attention, one, two, three, four. It's a four carbon molecule. And it has, again, two carboxylic acids, but again, they're, it's in an acetate form, meaning that the hydrogens have already left. So are you ready for this? The very first reaction of the Krebs cycle is to take that two carbon fragment, acetyl-CoA, and shove it right onto OAA, which is oxaloacetate, OAA, and it's gonna, if you have two carbons plus four carbons, it's gonna make six carbons. And so what facilitates the attachment is the removal of the CoA. Hmm, how do you like that? So the, the removal of the CoA makes the energy necessary to attach the two carbon fragment to produce citrate. Now citrate, again, is in a, uh, an anion form. It's in an ion, ionized form. If it has all of these hydrogens over there on these three carboxylic acids, it would be called citric acid. Maybe you're familiar with that chemical, citric acid. It's found in, in fruits. And so what's interesting about this is that sometimes the Krebs cycle is called the citric acid cycle. It named after the very first product in in the in the in the cycle. Sometimes it's called the tricarboxylic acid cycle because citric acid is a tri one two three one two three a tricarboxylic acid. So that's kind of interesting. So sometimes the Krebs cycle is known as TCA, tricarboxylic acid cycle. Now there's eight steps, and the reason why it's a cycle. Let's just go right to the chase on that. The reason it's a cycle is because though the first chemical reaction starts off with, with uh, oxaloacetate and, ac and acetyl-CoA producing citrate, the reactions end up producing OAA. And so thus it's a cycle. It just keeps going around and going around this way. And so that's kind of cool. So the Krebs cycle consists of eight steps, and we're about to look at all of them, although we've just looked at the first one. So what I'm going to do is go step by step and check it out, and then we'll back it out and talk about its importance. And so here's a picture of the cycle in its entirety. So just wanted to uh, give you a, a bigger perspective of it before we start looking. You know, this is the forest view before we look at the trees. Um, it's happening in the matrix. Uh, there's no oxygen involved, so it's a, in and of itself an anaerobic pathway but it's part two of aerobic cell respiration because the products of this Krebs cycle, principally the NADHs and FADH2s, are going to go on in the electron transport system, and there's where we're going to find the oxygen. And so it's considered an aerobic, part of the aerobic pathway. Um, okay, so it's in the it's in the matrix. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first chemical reaction is 
acetyl-CoA attaching to oxaloacetate to produce citrate. Okay, and so this is a six carbon molecule. It started off with four, two more makes six. And then you remove the CoA. Pretty cool. Now, this is kind of interesting. Uh, water is, this is a second reaction. Water is removed and then water is added. It kind of reminds me of, of that movie. I think it was, uh, I, I don't know, Karate Kid where it's like wax on, wax off. And so wax, water off, water on. And in so doing, you're like, well, this, this seems unnecessary. In so doing, what you're doing is making some arrangements here. So you're moving, uh, you're removing the hydroxyl over here from the third carbon over to, to the second carbon, that kind of thing. So you're producing isocitrate. Again, what's the point? It's not the most important part of the, the Krebs cycle. It, it's often forgotten. Um, it's just priming the molecule for what what's going to happen next. So in other words, the enzyme that we're going to see next in step three uh, prefers isocitrate and it's energetically more favorable. So there you go. So that dehydrogenase enzyme right in step three is going to catalyze a redox reaction. So this is important. The Krebs cycle is basically a series of redox reactions in which the substrate, i.e. the food, the food that we eat is oxidized. And when the food is oxidized, it loses energy. And who's gaining the energy? The very electronegative coenzyme NAD+. Plus. NAD, plus, NAD plus is then reduced, gaining electrons is reduction, into NADH. So the energy that was in food is now stored in NADH. And again, there's two of them. Now, I could say that there's two of everything, or I could just say there's one of everything, and the Krebs cycle has to go around twice. It's up to you. <laughs> but there's basically, it's got to go around twice. And so here's the thing. There's going to be two NADHs produced. Now check this out. Also, isocitrate, a one, two, three, four, five, let's say one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbon uh, compound is going to have one of its carbons removed. The CO2 right there is going to be r removed. Actually, it was the, it's this middle one. So this one right here is going to be removed. So CO2 is removed. So remember I promised you that when you're breathing out during the video, it's happening during the Krebs cycle. So the truth is, the conversion of peruvic acid to acetyl-CoA also removed two carbon dioxides. That's actually not technically part of the Krebs cycle. But that's two CO2s, and that's two more CO2s, so that's four. Okay. So now we have, as a result of that redox reaction, we have alpha-ketoglutarate. All right, what's going to happen to alpha-ketoglutarate that now has five carbons? Well, check this out. Step four of the, of the eight steps of the Krebs cycle should look very familiar, although it's really a complicated chemical reaction. It's one of those redox reactions, again, where the substrate of food is oxidized and the coenzyme is reduced. So again, lots of energy is being stored here. But the, the cell takes advantage of the fact that the redox reaction is releasing energy so it can stick another coenzyme on. And it can even remove, check it out, it even removes the CO2 over here. And so, hey, hey, there you have it. Two, four, and six CO2. So it's six carbon dioxides are produced during cell respiration. There, there, there they are. There they are. And so now you're down to this four carbon molecule called succinyl CoA. And so do you see here that the pink is the, is the two coming in from acetyl CoA right there? So it's a four carbon molecule. Now, step five is a really interesting one too because check this out. In so removing the coenzyme, see it took advantage, the cell took advantage of the fact that it had the, energon, the energetic ability to stick the coenzyme on. Now by removing the coenzyme, that is a release of energy which then the cell is capable of taking inorganic phosphate, 
This is, these are phosphate ions that are just floating in the, in the soup of the matrix, can take it and stick it onto succinyl to make succinate, okay? But it doesn't, it doesn't get stuck onto stu succinate. So, <laughs> okay, check this out. What happens is the energy from the removal of the coenzyme, the phosphate sticks onto guanine diphosphate to produce guanine triphosphate. I know. Guanine triphosphate, there's, there's cytosine triphosphate, adenine triphosphate, uh, cytosine triphosphate, and thymine triphosphate. Okay, these are, these are uh, also nucleotides, if you, if you think about them that way. So why, did the, why in the world did the cell do that? Well, it then takes the third phosphate from GTP and transfers it onto ADP to produce ATP. And so what's fascinating is two ATP are produced, and a kinase is involved in this, to transfer the phosphate onto ADP to make ATP. This is substrate level, substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so two ATP are produced in the Krebs cycle. Two ATP are produced in glycolysis. So now we've made a, a, a grand total of four, not a lot. But the Krebs cycle can make a little bit of ATP, but that's not its main function. Its main function is to take the energy of the food and store it in these reduced coenzymes. But that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't, you know, I. There's, there's many things that I, you know, I trying to explain this the best I can, and I hope you're enjoying it and following it. And I, I don't ever want to misspeak or, or, or let you down that way, uh, taking the time to watch the video. But I'm not actually sure why uh, GTP is involved and why the phosphate doesn't stick directly onto ADP to produce ATP. I'm not really sure about that. I find that that's kind of interesting. Someone's watching the video. Feel free to put a comment down and, and explain that to me. I'd be willing to, willing to learn. So succinate. So what do we got there? Check this out. What do you think step six is? We're almost there, eight. It looks like a redox reaction. It looks like succinate is, is, is being oxidized to fumarate. Now here's the thing. A redox reaction, not every coenzyme that's electronegative is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. This is flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. So when FAD gains the hydride, or acquires the electrons, pulls it in, it's going to become reduced, and it gets reduced to FADH2. FADH2. And so this has lots of potential energy, because it has the electrons in it. And so what's going to happen to fum fumarate? Well, water is added, so Again, one water, but if you're considering two to everything, it's two waters will produce malate. Or malic acid, if you wanted to add uh, the hydrogens here. And then finally, the last step is yet another redox reaction where malate is turned into uh, oxaloacetate. And so, again, energy is stored in the form of these NADHs. And so, now you have it. There is the Krebs cycle, or the citric acid cycle, or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. What is it? It occurs in the matrix. It produces lots of NADH and FADH2. And those are high energy molecules, which are then going to be cached in in the electron transport chain, or electron transport system, which is um, how ATP is massively produced during uh, oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain. And so here's another look at it. And so again, here's that little shuffle step going from peruvic acid to acetyl-CoA, not technically part of the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle begins with uh, acetyl-CoA sticking to uh, oxalo acid um, and producing citric acid. That's the uh, that's the first product, okay. So then citric acid cruises along, and so basically we're making a lot of reduced coenzymes. That's what we're doing. Lots of reduced coenzymes, and we produce two uh, CO2s there, two CO2, two CO2s there, and also we produce two ATP. If you go around once, it's one for everything, but if you go around twice, it's two for everything. 
Okay, so to summarize it, basically what we're doing is converting pyruvate in the Krebs cycle to a large quantity of energy carriers. So this is where all of the energy from food is now stored, although a little bit has, has been released in the form of ATP. Okay, so again, many diagrams. Uh, lots of reduced coenzymes are produced in the Krebs cycle, so I'm hope, hoping you're getting the point on that. A lot of reduced coenzymes are being produced in the Krebs cycle. And so the cycle begins with acetate, uh, it then produces acetyl-CoA, and then acetyl-CoA then uh, attaches to uh, OAA to form citrate, which is the first reaction. Then ultimately, the OAA is recycled back to itself, thus it's called a cycle, and you get lots of CO2 forming. And for every time the, the cycle goes around, one ATP is produced, so you net two ATP, and every time the cycle goes around, you make a lot of NADH and FADH2. So that's pretty cool. And so all of that is happening inside here, which is where we are, right here in the Krebs cycle. And so, again, the outer membrane, the inner membrane, uh, the Christi, right in here, the inner membrane, Christi. And so the matrix is where the, my, the Krebs cycle is occurring. Pretty cool. And so let me conclude with, if you don't mind, uh, coming back to this video that I think it's pretty helpful. So here, here you have uh, acetyl-CoA and what's going to happen to it. It's going to go into the Krebs cycle. And so this is going to be a sort of a brief look at it. Look, it's attaching to the OAA, there's citric acid. And so what's going to happen? You're going to have some CO2 removed. Uh, so it's going to take the six carbon down to a five and then, hey, there's a redox reaction in which some of the energy is transferred over. Look, another CO2 is produced, now you're down to four. Another redox reaction. And so, guess what? The Krebs cycle is a series of redox reactions. Hey, two ATP are also produced, like those little starbursts. And then FADH2 uh, is produced, another reduced coenzyme, and then finally, another redox reaction recycles it back to OAA. And so, pretty awesome. It just keeps going around and around and around, provided that we keep eating, because the food that we're eating is coming in in the form of acetyl-CoA. Pretty remarkable. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you appreciate just the, the level of sophistication. And if you, if you followed it, and, and um, you know, good for you. I mean, it's not, it's not an easy thing. It's, some, it's sometimes notorious. You know, I'll, I'll hear people talking about it all the time. Ah, the Krebs cycle. Oh, it was so tricky. I, I remember studying it. I don't recall it. I don't remember what it was. And it's like, I think you're, like, that might be giving it a little bit too much, uh, too much credit. But it is important, and sure, it is tricky. But it's, it's like, you know, you earned it. It was like the ability to hike up to a tall mountain to see this beautiful view wasn't accomplished just by watching this video. If you're able to understand this, it's because of everything that you've done in your life um, that led you up to this. All the all the work that you've un that you've studied enzymes and other chemical reactions. All of it has led you to this. And so there you have it. So hope you enjoyed it. The citric acid cycle. Hans Krebs. Way to roll. Thanks for watching.